If you're looking for an ultra quiet 3000 watt pure sine wave 12 volt inverter, this just may be the one. It's supposed to be ultra quiet. I'm gonna check that out. And then also let's see if it's any good. All right, so let's see what comes in the box here. Okay, we have an owner's manual. We have um, a product overview with some specifications. We have a Cat5e cable, which I believe I read is 17 foot long. And that connects from the inverter to the little remote control display here, which I have used this also in one of their other inverter reviews by this company, Jung Pao. And it's a good one, it worked well. And this one comes with battery cables. The other one I reviewed did not come with battery cables. And this one is two, two gauge. So that's on the small side. I would probably want to use two alt, at least two alt with, with this size of inverter. Let's get the inverter out. Okay, so I got the inverter out. And one thing I noticed from the other inverter review I did by this company, they have a little screen display right on top. I'm curious to see what's actually on there when I get it powered on. Okay, here's the DC side, which looks just like the other 3080 watt inverter I reviewed by this company. Um, the the uh, positive and negative are very far apart, which I really like. I, I don't like it when they're just really close and there's a possibility they could touch. Uh, little protective caps here, a little nut that you take off. Okay, so here's the AC side of the inverter. I've taken the little cover off here so you could see under the hardware terminals here. That's always a nice feature on a high wattage inverter like this. We have two 110 outlets, AC outlets. They're not GFCI. We have a power indicator light here, a USB-C and a USB-A type uh, chargers. That's where the uh, Cat5e cable plugs in that goes to the remote. And then we have a power switch here that when in up position turns the inverter on, in the middle position it's off, in the bottom it's controlled with the remote control. The inverter does have these little rubberized feet here covers that come off the actual feet where you could bolt this down if you wanted to. But if you didn't, and you just wanted to lay it somewhere, it does really stay solid. Uh, those feet keep it from moving around very much. So here's some information from the bottom of the inverter on the sticker. This model is an LGE 3080, and it does say it's only 110. Now the previous inverter I reviewed by this company, it had a dip switch on front where you could switch between 50 and 60 hertz, which you wouldn't want to do really. And then you could switch between uh, 110 or 120, uh, 120 volts. And that's a great feature. I wish this one had. This one doesn't have it. Okay, so I just quickly hooked up a battery to show you what's on the little display screen on top of the inverter. We do have the uh, DC battery voltage at 13.1, the AC output voltage at 110. We're using zero watts currently. We are running at 60 hertz. And the little symbol on top right just means it's pure sine wave. Okay, so first I'm going to test just how quiet this new inverter is. So I have here the previous inverter I reviewed by Jung Pao. This is the LG 3080 Ti. I put, if you're interested in that video, you can go see that. It's a fantastic inverter. But I want to, I want to see how quiet this is first. But, but first, before I do that, let's, let's uh, use my meter here. Let's just see how quiet it is. Now I do have my everyday in, inverter going on over there, and it's, I think this is going to be louder than that, so it should be okay. So. Okay, let me be quiet and let's see what it is, uh, if there's no noise at all. Okay, about 33, 34. So now I've got an oil heater in the floor. I'm gonna turn it on and let's see. We're pulling 822 watts. I'm gonna first do it right over the inverter. Okay, that's 62. Let me move it about a meter away. And 54. Okay, so let me get the new inverter I'm reviewing today and let's see how quiet it is. Okay, I've, uh, so I have the new uh, LG 3080 Jung Pao inverter hooked up now. Let me turn on the oil heater. I'm going to hold the meter right over top first. So that's right at 52 decibels. That's 10 decibels quieter. Let's get about a meter away. Again, around 10 decibels quieter. So that is significantly quieter than the other 3080 watt inverter. And I forgot to mention the oil heater does not make any noise as it's warming up when it's cold at first. It takes a while before it starts making a little bit of noise. So that is uh, impressive. All right, let's do a 
idle consumption test. So to start with, I don't, I do not have the inverter, I'm um, an inverter uh, remote plugged in. I'm gonna see if that makes a difference. So inverter's turned on. Let's check the voltage real quick. And we're getting 13.15, 13.15. All right, let's check, whoops, the amps. Let's turn it on DC, zero it out. Zero, all right, let's check the amps. Hit the hold and we get 0.51. So if we do 0.51 times 13.15, we're not even getting seven watts. So 6.7 watts, so that's, that's really good. So let me turn the inverter on remote control, control. And let's plug it in. And that was already turned on, so it turned on. So the voltage should be the same, 13.15. So let's turn that off a of hold. Let's zero it out again. And let's check this time. Okay, I got 0.53. So I think that's what I had the last time. Let's see. 0.53 times one. 13.15, 6.96. So yeah, so that really didn't make a lick of difference to have that on, so that's good to know. So idle consumption is very good on this inverter. Okay, so now we're going to test the inverter efficiency, which the manufacturer claims is 92%. And what that means is this inverter should be 92% efficient at converting the DC electricity out of the battery into AC electricity coming out of the inverter that powers our little space heater we have here. So what I'm going to use here is the battery mobile app, which the, which the wattage is right there. So we're going to take this wattage and compare it to the wattage that is being used by the space heater. And that will give us our efficiency. I'll, I'll show you how to do that math in just a second. So let's turn on the space heater. Let's zoom in here as you can see. We see 830 something. It's going to settle down in just a second. The mobile app is showing 871 currently. We're showing 813 down there on, let's see, I think it's settled down pretty good. So we're showing 871. Now this, now this mobile app is the battery mobile app. So, okay, it's jumping around a little bit, but it seems to be holding pretty close to 870. So let's just say 875 and 811. All right, so let's turn this off. Let's zoom back out. Let's go to the calculator. And I believe it was 811. Yeah, divided by 875. And look at there, 92% efficient. Just a little over that. If you round up, it's 93%. So that is very good efficiency. Okay, so it's time for a max load test. I have two these lead time batteries hooked up. This one has two, 200, BM, 200 amp BMS. This has a 100 amp BMS. I just started running the test a little bit, testing things out here. So the, this wire is slightly warm. Hope they don't get too hot. If they do, I have to switch out the wires. This is just for a test. Those wires aren't big enough. All right, so I have, um, I have a space heater over here and I have an oil heater down here on the ground and heat gun over on the right where I can uh, dial it in as close as I can get to 3080. So let's start cranking things on. That's 1230 watts. And that is 2500 watts. No problem. All right, let's turn on the heat gun. Let's get as close to 3080 as we can get without overdoing it. It's gonna start beeping. It's up to 3050. 3023, let's go ahead and get started. Let's see if we can run this for a couple of minutes. So it is warning you, it is at its max capacity, but it's still going. So let's see if we can make two minutes here. All right, so it shut us off. The battery didn't shut off, the inverter did shut off. So overload protection, it says. 
So just over 3,080, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. Okay, so let's try this again. This time I want to try to run it just under 3,000 watts and see what we get. So let's crank. I'll let it cool off for maybe a couple minutes. Let's see. Crank things up here. We're up to 2,530 watts. Kick on the heat gun. Turn it up some more. It's only at 2,800 roughly. All right, so I have it up to 2,998. Right at 3,000 now. All right, let's run this for a couple of minutes. All right, so it made it two minutes. Start turning everything off, let it cool down. Uh, so it did make it two minutes, that's good. But it didn't quite get up to the 3080 like it's rated for. It was just under 3000 and it held that just fine. Now it did beep occasionally on and off and then towards the end it beeped solid. But uh, it, did, it did hold up to two minutes at full max. Okay, we're going to do one more test here. I'm going to try to shoot this up to about 3,500 watts. Let's, let's just see what happens. So let me get that going, get the oil heater going. Now when I get the oil heater's going, so we're now up to 2,538 watts. As soon as I turn on the uh, heat, heat gun, it should shoot it right up to around 3,500. So let's see what happens. I don't know if you saw there, but it actually spiked at 7500 watts that was more than i thought but it shut off just like it should okay so i have the cover off of the inverter for those that are interested in such a thing to see the internal build quality uh, this is something i'm not an expert in i can't do a lot of commenting on it so for those that are an expert please leave your comments be much appreciated i'll just go around here take a look at the different parts for those that are interested. There is like a plastic, I guess, cover, shield or whatever that goes, that forces all the air from the fans through these big heat sinks here. All right, that's the internal build. That completes my testing of this Jungpal Ultra Quiet Inverter. My final thoughts are that this is a very good inverter, just like all the other inverters I reviewed from Jungpal. And it's the quietest inverter I've ever had, which is the main selling point of this inverter. At un just under seven watts of consumption, 92% conversion effici efficiency, uh, very stable uh, voltage regulation. It, it's hard to beat this, especially at the price. Right now, you can pick this inverter up off Amazon for $160 if you, you click the coupon next to the price. Uh, Jung Pao has become my favorite brand of 12-volt inverter. If I had to pick something out to complain about, though, I would say I wish this inverter had the little dip switch that allowed me to easily switch between one, uh, 10 volts and 120 volts, like the other inverters that I reviewed. Also, this inverter wasn't quite able to stand up to that 3,080 watts continuous that it is rated for. It was just under 3,000, which is, which is fine because you never want to run an inverter that close to its rated capacity anyway, other than just a few seconds. Uh, typically, inverters, uh, you would keep the max continuous load to about 50% of rated capacity, with only the, only the occasional spike above that up to the rated capacity. Uh, I really did like the remote control also. Although you don't really need it since you have a display right on top here. Maybe if you use an RV, you need to run it to a different place. But yeah, it's right here on top, so that makes it really convenient. Jungpao also makes a 2080 and a 1280 watt version of this same inverter. I'll leave a link down to Amazon where you can uh, look at it if you're interested. Well, that does it for my uh, review of this Jungpao inverter. I would like to thank Jungpao for sending this out for my review. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.